Hello everyone and welcome to the Marketing Cloud API series. In this video, we will look at running a few of the SOAP API requests in the Postman collection. If you've tried to create data extensions programmatically, uh, you may have noticed that there's no REST API method for this. Okay, So luckily there's a SOAP API request through which we can create a data extension. So in our first scenario, we will look at retrieving details about the data extension and then creating a, uh, a DE as well. Okay. Later, we'll also see how to fetch details about an automation workflow in our org and then how to run it uh, through the SOAP API request. Okay, so let's start with the data extension scenarios first. Okay, so I have a folder called API series and I have test DE in this folder. Okay, now I, I want to create a, a new data extension in this same folder. For that first, we will go get the details about this existing DE um, as I want to get the folder ID and then use it in the create request. Okay, so once we come into Postman uh, under the SOAP uh, folder, let's go into data extensions uh, and look for the retrieve data extension object uh, SOAP API request, okay? So let's click on that and in the body that you will see a sample already given. Uh, and here is what we need to actually populate. We need to like replace the customer key. Uh, right now the sample has Postman demographics. So we need to give the customer key of the test D that we saw earlier, okay? So let's go back to our uh, test data extension here. Let me copy this Control C and let me go back to our postman Okay, and replace this value right here Okay, uh, you will see that the access token and the subdomain uh, will automatically be taken from our um, You know environment variables. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this request Okay, great, so we got a overall status. Okay, um, and we did get the object ID and the customer key. Uh, but one thing that I was looking for is the category ID, which is the folder of this uh, specific um, folder, the API series folder where this data extension resides. So you will notice that, you know, uh, there's no category ID property mentioned here in this example, right? Um, now, if I go back to our documentation, uh, that you see here. Under SOAP API, if you look at the objects, uh, if you go to data extension, this is the object that we were using, right? At the top, you will see there's a property called category ID, okay? And this specifies the ID of the folder that the data extension actually resides in, okay? So if we add the property category ID in the request, we will get the, the value of the folder, uh, the category ID of the folder back in the response. Okay, so back in Postman, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, you know, add a one more row here, okay? And I'm just going to change it to category ID. So make sure like uh, it's the same uh, case that we have here, category ID, okay? So it's exactly the same. Uh, let's go ahead and repeat our request and see if we can get the category ID back. Okay, great. So there you see we got the category ID this time. It's 362942. Uh, this is the specific ID of that folder API series in which this uh, test D resides. Okay, now we will use this category ID uh, when we create the new data extension using the create data extension request. Okay, so now let's go to the create data extension request. Um, so in the body, it will actually show the details of um, all the fields that we will need to like provide uh, to create a data extension. Uh, so there's all the like some uh, dummy data uh, that's all the available in the XML here. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and edit this, uh, you know, for our scenario. Um, so first of all, uh, I need to change the customer uh, key and the name. Um, so I only have a sample values. So let me go ahead and paste that across. I'm also going to be adding the, the category ID because the category ID is not available by default, okay? Uh, so let me push this over and align it. Okay, I have the customer key. I'm, I'm calling it as uh, test API DE1. Uh, the name of the data extension is going to be API series DE1. And the category ID, as you can see here, uh, 362942. That's the one that we got from the previous uh, retrieve request uh, for the test DE one. Okay, so we're, we want to create this new DE API series DE one in the same folder. So that's why I'm giving the category ID as the same one here. Okay, now uh, we'll, we'll want to make it as a sendable data extension. So I'm going to leave it as true. Um, and if it's sendable, you need to provide the subscriber key. Um, so we're going to call the subscriber key. Um, and the subscriber key uh, field uh, is, is going to be this one. 
uh, we will have the the primary key set to true uh, is required uh, and uh, that's going to be our subscriber key okay so I'll leave the default first name last name uh, email and gender and I'm going to get rid of the other fields because I don't need them this is this is the demo purposes okay so let me go ahead down here and delete this out delete one more row there you have it so that's the XML body that we just edited for this new DE okay um, so it still has the ET subdomain uh, and the access token uh, so that's the, uh, everything should be automatically populated the MID is the the account ID by default is going to get created in the uh, the account ID that where my install package is okay so let me go ahead and create uh, the data extension okay so status code is okay it says data extension is created uh, all good so let's go and check uh, in our UI if the data extension got created okay so now we are back in our contact builder uh, as you can see the API series DE1 uh, just got created uh, it has the five fields so if I go into it uh, you will see that it was actually created in the API series uh, folder uh, correctly and the five fields that we mentioned uh, in the um, XML body the subscriber key the first name the last name email and the gender the subscriber key is the primary key um, so everything uh, basically on what we've uh, specified has come across correctly okay now you'll notice that uh, data retention is turned off okay so what if I want to like you know have a, a data extension created with the, the data retention on right so if you go to our uh, data extension here you can see there are additional properties that you can specify so there's data retention period uh, which you can specify as days weeks months or years uh, and then there's a the period length like you know if you want it for one month you can specify it as months and one if you want like six days you can specify days and the number six for this one uh, this one is actually deprecated so don't use the period unit of measure use these two okay and then uh, if you want uh, if you leave this uh, field out the delete at end of retention period uh, if you leave it out by default it's false which means uh, everything including the data and the data extension will get um, deleted but uh, if you add that in and if you keep it as true then uh, only the data ex uh, the data will be deleted the data extension does not get deleted right uh, for my example I'm just going to use these two um, and I'm going to use uh, one month period uh, and then create a new data extension so we can see the difference and then uh, we will see the check the retention period and see if that uh, has uh, reflected correctly in the UI okay so back in postman uh, I'm just going to make uh, slight changes to the uh, XML here I'm going to call it uh, test API DE2 API series DE2 it's going to be the same category folder uh, and I'm going to add two more properties that we saw uh, in the documentation uh, as I said the data retention period I'm going to use it as months and the, the data retention period length uh, I'm going to use it as one so basically we're saying like uh, delete uh, the data extension and the, the data after one month okay uh, and because I'm not specifying that third uh, parameter that we saw earlier uh, to delete only the data uh, it's going to delete the data extension as well okay so now let's go ahead and run this and see if we'll create our second data extension with the data retention period okay so it says uh, okay the data extension has been created uh, to test API DE2 API series DE2 okay so we'll go check this in the UI to see if it's reflecting correctly okay so back in contact builder we can see that the API series DE2 is now reflecting if I go drill down into this uh, now you can see like uh, the difference between the previous one you will see that it's going to delete all records and data extensions and it's going to delete it in a month from now so if I click on edit it will show after one month correctly okay so whatever we provided in the uh, rest uh, sorry the SOAP API request has been um, you know carried forward into uh, and created properly on the UI side as well okay so for the next scenario we will look at retrieving the details of an automation that we have uh, and then execute it from the SOAP API okay the reason that we need to retrieve the details first is because uh, we need the object ID of the automation okay and and we don't have that in the UI um, so we need that uh, to retrieve that first and then use that in the uh, perform automation request so if you go into uh, postman collection under SOAP uh, go to the automations folder you will see uh, the perform automation uh, request so let me click on this one here um, and then you will see that you know it's requiring an object ID so this is a sample uh, but this is where you need to provide the object ID of that specific automation that you want to run okay now in order to get that object ID we first need to run the retrieve automation here 
So let me open this one and this one is pretty straightforward. It will give you the uh, details about an automation uh, as long as you provide the customer key for that. Now that's available on the UI. So we can go ahead and get the customer key of the automation that we are uh, planning to like uh, run. Uh, so let's go to the UI. Uh, in the summary part, you will see this is our customer key. Let me copy that over. Come back into Postman here and paste it. Okay, so now if we go ahead and run this, it should return the properties of this particular automation. Okay, so when you run the request, uh, you will get a uh, the uh, return response, but you will notice that the object ID comes as uh, nil. Okay, so in order to do get the object ID properly back, uh, you need to add a property called program ID here. Okay, so let me go ahead and add that. Uh, let me just change this to program ID. And now let me go ahead and run this again. And then you will notice that the object ID uh, gets populated correctly. So in case when you're trying to retrieve uh, the object ID of the automation, and if you ever come across the issue that uh, the um, object ID shows us nil, uh, make sure that the program ID uh, is in the properties as well, okay? Okay, so now we will go and uh, try to perform the automation. So let's click on perform automation. Um, so in here, uh, you will see that you need to provide the object ID. Um, so let's go ahead and get the object ID of that automation from here. Uh, control C, we'll go to perform automation and paste that here. Oops, sorry. Uh, e. There you go. Okay, uh, now let's go to the UI before we run this. Uh, let's go here and uh, check the last run here. Okay, so it ran at uh, 1.32 p.m. Uh, because after we run this, we need to come and refresh and see like, you know, uh, if the new run has been logged here. Okay. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and cl click send. Okay, and it says status code is okay. It performed the activity. Uh, the object ID is the one that we've uh, given, so uh, it should have performed. Now let's go back into the uh, UI. Uh, let's click on Refresh. And there you see, it's currently running. Uh, it's the latest one here, um, so it should get completed in a few seconds from now. Okay, so I refreshed the screen again, so I got that it's completed now. Um, so you can see like um, how we were able to like, you know, invoke uh, the automation and uh, execute it uh, from the SOAP API request. Okay. So with that, uh, we've now seen how to execute few of the common uh, API requests in the Postman collection. Uh, so do please uh, try out some of these um, uh, other requests as well that you see in the Postman collection, right? Uh, and you can use the SOAP API documentation, uh, especially the, the object properties, um, so you can understand like you know what each of the properties stand for uh, and then you can play around that uh, with that in the XML body as well okay uh, well hope this is very useful thank you for watching